every so often when I'm researching post-apocalyptic cities, I come across images like this. Little dioramas of sunken skyscrapers. I think they look really cool and I've always thought it would be interesting if you could dive down and take a look inside the building, which is what inspired the animation you just watched. In this video we're going to cover how to create underwater effects, large scale oceans, animated sea creatures and a bunch of other cool tricks. Before we get started I want to say thank Concept D is a new brand by Acer and they've sent me this Concept D7 Spatial Labs Edition laptop to make this video. It comes with a bunch of unique features including an awesome screen that delivers a full stereoscopic 3D experience. We'll talk a bit more about that later in the video but let's just jump into the breakdown. So the basic underwater effect is simple. First go into the world shader settings and make the background a shade of blue. Then you just need to add a cube to your scene and scale it way up so it covers everything, give it a new material. Remove the principal shader and plug in a principal volume shader into the volume input. You'll just need to lower the density down a little bit and change the colour so it's a different shade of blue. For my animation I thought it would be cool to have the scene illuminated by a head mounted flashlight, kind of like the ones worn by professional divers. So I just created a spotlight and I moved it into position just above the camera and then I parented the light to the camera. You can alter the spotlight size and you can increase the radius of the light. You can also alter the blend mode to change the smoothness of the edges of the shadows. That gives us the basic underwater effect but we can take things even further by enabling the mist pass. In render mode you can actually switch so you can see the output of the mist pass so you can see what you're doing better. In the world tab you can alter the fall off type and the distance of the mist pass. Just play around with those figures until the foreground is a bit darker and the background elements are visible but just barely. Render out one frame and then jump over to the compositing tab and enable use nodes. If you take a look at any underwater photography you'll notice that everything is always a little bit blurry so add a blur node into the compositor and set it to somewhere between 2 to 5 pixels. Duplicate the blur node but this time set it to a much higher value somewhere between 30 and 70 pixels. Now plug both of those blur nodes into a mix shader and connect the mist pass as the factor. Doing this allows us to control the blur based on the distance from the camera. The further away the object is from the camera, the more it's going to get blurred. I knew that this scene was going to take a while to create, so to keep the modeling as simple as possible, I used any trick that I could. For instance, the Archie Mesh add-on came really handy when I wanted to do some architectural elements like the doors. To make everything look like it was a little bit dirty and had stuff growing on it like you get underwater, I made this algae shader as a node group. I could just drop that shader onto every material in the scene and it would get everything a little bit of a layer of sort of grime. I purposely made the shader to be really versatile so it could be applied to really small objects but also really huge objects like the skyscraper. I'll be uploading a version of this shader to my Patreon so if you're interested you might want to check that out. Another good time saving measure was to use photo scans from Sketchfab. If you've seen my videos before you'll know that I love to integrate photo scans into my scenes. Photo scans can be very heavy geometry wise, some of them have millions of polygons each, but thankfully this Concept D7 Spatial Labs Edition laptop easily had enough processing power to handle really dense meshes, but there are plenty of ways that you can clean up scans to make it even more performant. Usually I'll start off by just going into edit mode, selecting everything and using the merge by distance command to get rid of any doubles. That cleared up 300,000 verts in this case so it's definitely worth doing. Then I'll usually just add a decimate modifier. You can often get away with massively decimating scans without losing too much detail, especially when it's not a hard surface model. I managed to reduce this scan from 1.3 million verts to just under 100,000 verts without any real noticeable loss in detail. Now this Concept D7 comes with a really handy model viewer which is perfect for selecting and previewing scanned objects before you import them into the scene. It saved me a lot of time and it comes with a really handy bridge add-on so you can actually send models straight from Blender to the app to take a better look at them. Once the models are in the viewer you get a full stereoscopic 3D experience and the laptop actually tracks your eyes in real time so you can look around the model hands free. You can move around the object and you get this effect almost like you're looking through a window into a 3D world. I think it's really impressive. I thought all the barnacles covering the various surfaces looked really good and they were a nice touch and they were actually very simple to make. I just cut a sphere in half and then I pushed in the center point a little bit with proportional editing turned on. 
Then I add a displacement modifier to the mesh and I set that to cloud texture. I used global coordinates for the texture which means that the displacement changes as the mesh moves around the scene. That essentially gives you a different random barnacle every time the mesh is duplicated. The material for the barnacle was really quick and dirty since I knew they wouldn't be viewed up close. I just projected the texture from the top view and I crudely slapped that under a picture of some barnacles. The barnacles were distributed all over the different pieces of geometry using a geometry node setup. I won't go into much detail about this because there's loads of tutorials online about how to distribute particles using geometry nodes. But the fact that I used geometry nodes allowed me to quickly apply the barnacle system to any object. I just had to select the object, add the geo node modifier and select the barnacles from the drop down list. Then I could make any changes to it that I wanted. The geometry node system also came in really handy to make some very basic seaweed. This system basically just distributes a load of images of some leaves along a curve. The leaves have this noise effect applied to their position so it looks kind of like they're swaying in the water. The cool thing about using a curve for this effect is the fact that you can actually just draw the curves straight onto the geometry and it'll apply the seaweed to wherever you draw them without having to manually move them into place. Okay, now let's move on and talk about how we make the creature animations. I apologize by the way if you're scared of sharks, the Miko shark match actually came from Sketchfab. I just tweaked the materials a little bit, but apart from that I left it as it was. It did come with a rig, but I deleted that and made a new one from scratch. I used the Rigify add-on, which comes with Blender, you just have to enable it. It has a fish meta rig, and all I had to do was line up the bones and click generate rig. And then I shift selected the mesh and the rig and I parented that with automatic weights. The rig did have a few issues after it was parented so I just had to go into the weight painting tools and I had to paint out some areas that shouldn't be affected by certain bones. Once that was done I animated out this very basic swim cycle. I just set the keyframes to cyclical so that the animation would continue over again 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 all the way through the scene. Then I only had to animate the root bone to make the shark actually move through the world. The fish model was also from Sketchfab, but this time I actually kept the rig that came with it and the swim animation. Even though the rig did get a little bit messed up when it was imported into Blender, it didn't seem to affect the animation, so I didn't care. I added a new plane to the scene and I gave this one a buoyed type particle system. Then I set the fish mesh as the particle object. A buoyed is like a basic AI system in Blender. You can give the particles certain rules to follow and they'll try the best to follow their rules. In this instance, I just told all the fish that they had to keep a certain distance separated from each other and they had to follow this cube. Now as I move this cube around the scene, all the fish will try their best to follow its location. Now one problem I had with this was the fact that every fish in the particle system was referencing the same object with the same animation, which means that every fish was swimming perfectly in sync. So to fix that, I just duplicated the fish two times and for each copy, I offset the keyframe animation a little bit so they were all swimming slightly out of sync. Then I added those fish to a new group and I used that group as the particle system. That makes it much less obvious that these are all just perfect duplicates of the same fish because now they're all swimming slightly out of sync. Right, now we've got all the underwater stuff done, let's move up to the surface. To create the building, I just modeled one window panel based on a reference image and then I duplicated the windows sideways and then I duplicated again upwards using two different array modifiers. Then I could just copy that array system to make the sides of the building as well. I didn't bother with the back because you're not going to see it. I gave this model some basic materials for concrete and glass and metals for the window frames. I used my algae shader again to make some nice grungy material on the concrete and the glass. I made a sphere and I gave it a displacement texture so it had a little bit of noise to it and I used that as a boolean object to cut out different destroyed sections for the building. The building mesh by this point was really high poly once I'd applied all the arrays but the Concept D7 laptop did a really good job of cutting out the holes despite all this dense geometry. Smashing out some of the random faces was really easy, I just selected one glass panel in edit mode and then I used the select similar function by area to find all of the other windows of the same size. Then I hid everything that wasn't a window pane with shift and H. 
To select some random pieces of glass to delete, I used the select random function, which does exactly what you'd expect it to do. It selects random faces from the object that you're on in any mode. You can alter the threshold to change how many of the faces should be selected. Once you're happy with the selection, just need to click delete and then you can unhide the rest of the geometry. I manually deleted some of the glass that was around the cutout sections as well since it makes no sense that the buildings fell down but the glass is fine. So I ran into an awful lot of problems with this project and the water cost most of them. Originally I was going to do an actual fluid sim and I was even going to have the whale leap out of the water as the camera pulled away from the tower. But that was going to take literally days to calculate. Even using flip fluids which is faster than Blender's default water simulation tools it was still going to take days to figure this water simulation out. I didn't have that sort of time so I needed to quickly figure out another method. So I added a plane and I applied the ocean modifier to it instead. There's a few settings that you can alter here to get different wave patterns and things like that. You can also animate the time which will make the waves move during the animation. The next problem was how I was going to add thickness to this sea. So I added a solidify modifier which gave me this horrible shape around the edges. To fix that I eventually figured out the best thing to do would be to add a cube to the scene and use it as a boolean object set to intersect so you only see the parts of the sea that are inside the cube. That gives us some nice clean edges around the side. It worked better than I expected it to at first. However, it did cause some other issues. The height of the ocean would just randomly glitch out and change shape during the animation. I did think that I'd fixed that problem, but then when I looked at the final render, I was getting this really weird effect and I realised it was caused by the fact that the ocean was still changing shape. In the end, the only way that I could fix this problem was to render the whole scene out again, but this time I had to apply the ocean modifier. So the waves don't actually move in the animation, which is a real shame, but it was unavoidable in this case. Now back to the building, I knew that I wanted a layer of green algae around the water level, the high water mark. Normally I would just paint a mask with texture painting, but this building didn't have proper UVs and I didn't really fancy trying to unwrap this building. So rather than trying to unwrap this mess, what I did is I just used vertex colours. Vertex colours work a little bit like weight painting. Basically, it allows you to paint a mask straight onto the mesh, as long as you've got enough polygons. So then if you go into your shaders and you add an attribute node, you can enter the name of the group that you just created, and you can use that as a factor to mix two different materials together. In this case, I mixed the building material with a new green shader, which would be the sort of high watermark. To make the white water for the waves, I added a texture that I made a long time ago of some waves and I animated it so that it would move across the surface of the water. Now this caused a new issue. Since the sides of the ocean were just cut out from a boolean, those faces don't have UVs. So when you add the white water to the top, it gets stretched down the sides. The easiest way to fix this, I figured out, was to add a texture coordinate node and select only the blue channel using the separate RGB node. That basically gives a selection which is only the top faces of the object and we can use that as a mask to remove the white water effect from the side of the cube while leaving it on the top surface. Finally, to finish up the building, I added a sign and then I used the mossy node group that I made for my Patreon a while ago just to add a little bit of extra grunge to the concrete. The ivy was created using Bagger's IvyGen GeoNode setup. It's a really random system that automatically applies ivy to any objects in a specified collection. It has loads of tools to customise different options and you can grab it for free. I'll link that in the description below. Now to go back and fix some more render issues I had to get a little bit creative with the nodes for the background and the volume. As you can see as you scroll through the timeline the background and the volume changes colour and intensity and all sorts of other stuff. That was to fix different issues that occurred during the renders that I tried. That's really simple to do, you just add a few mix nodes basically and then you keyframe the values. So once I'd rendered this thing out about four different times to fix all the mistakes, I was finally at the point where I could add a particle system to put some debris in the water. I made four different images of particles in Photoshop and I added those to a plane. I used a little fancy node setup which would basically randomise the location of the UVs so every time you copied the plane you would get a different version of the image. 
I placed a new plane above the camera and I gave it a particle system. Then I selected the debris image as the particle which was going to be emitted from the particle system. I turned down the gravity strength so that all the particles would fall really slowly. Then I parented the emitter to the camera so that the particles would always spawn just in front of the camera and then fall down into view. I added a turbulence force and I parented that to the camera too so that the particles would basically just get kicked around a little bit. The nice final touch was to just increase the damping and the drag force on the particle system. That makes it look more like the sort of moving in underwater currents. I rendered this particle system out on a black background so I could composite it on top of the original animation. Rendering the particle system out separately gave me more control over it as I could make the particles fade out as the camera left the water, things like that. I was really impressed with how well this Spatial Labs Edition laptop handled the particle system. Despite having 50,000 particles in this scene, I was getting real-time performance in the viewport. Altogether, I spent at least 80 hours of my life rendering out this animation and re-rendering this animation just to fix all the different problems that popped up. There's still a few graphical glitches and one or two other problems, but I learned a ton working on this project and I hope you did too. If you did, make sure you hit the like and the subscribe button below. Don't forget to check out the link in the description to find out more about this awesome Concept D7 Spatial Labs Edition laptop.